So up to this point um, in algebra, we have seen a couple different ways to find solutions of quadratic equations. Uh, the first way we learned was factoring. That was back in chapter 9. Uh, if we can factor a quadratic equation easily, uh, it can be very, very quickly, you can very, very quickly find your solutions. Another way we saw to solve quadratic equations was if we didn't have a b value, if we just had something that looked like ax squared plus c equals 0, we could just subtract the c divided by a and use square roots. We saw that earlier in chapter 10. Now in 10.6, what we have here is a formula that's a fast way to find solutions of any quadratic formula ever. So maybe you can't factor something. You can use the quadratic formula. Maybe you can factor it, but it requires doing some extra work. You might need to Xbox. You might need to do some other things. The quadratic formula is a foolproof way of solving a quadratic equation. So here is the quadratic formula. If you have a quadratic equation written in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then your solutions are, are x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's just look at how we can use this quadratic formula. We want to solve x squared plus 6x equals negative 8. Well, the first thing we're going to want to do is write this in standard form. So x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. Just moving that negative 8 over. Now our a value is 1, our b value is 6, and our c value is 8. You do not need to write these over to the side, but it can be helpful because now you don't even need to look at this. You're just looking here. So here, let's use our quadratic formula. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 8. Then all of this is over 2 times 1. Well, now let, we get to simplify a little bit. Negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative, uh, excuse me, 6 squared is 36. Well, 4 times 1 times 8 is 32. So it's the square root of 36 minus 32. All of that, that was a little ugly, is over 2. Okay, let's keep simplifying. Negative 6 plus or minus square root of 36 minus 32 is 4, all over 2. Okay, let's keep going. What's the square root of 4? Well, just 2. Negative 6 plus or minus 2, all over 2. So here we have two options. We either have negative 6 plus 2 over 2 or negative 6 minus 2 over 2. So x is equal to negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4, or we can add 2, so x is equal to negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. So our two solutions are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4. So this felt like a lot of work, but you have to understand that this is a foolproof method. This will work every single time. You plug in your A, you plug in your B, you plug in your C. Do some simplifying and you're home free. Let's try a couple more. Remember our A value here is 1, B is 5, A and C is 2. So B, negative B is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, oh, excuse me, b is 5. So negative 5. Choo, choo, choo. 
negative 5 plus or minus 5 squared. I'm just going to write 25 right away. This 25 came from 5 squared. V squared is 25. Minus 4 times 1 times 2. All of that over 2 times 1 is equal to x. So now simplifying here. We have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. So 25 minus 8, excuse me, whoops, 25 minus 8 is 17. All of that is over 2. So now we're in a little predicament. That looks a little bit different than the last slide. Before we were dealing with the square root of 4. And we could simplify the square root of 4 as 2. Here we have the square root of 17. So right now what we have is a nice exact answer. But what we can do is we can evaluate the square root of 17 and get a decimal. So if we take the square root of 17, um, we know that that is equal to about 4.123. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get our two answers and we're going to round our, our solution. So we have negative 5 plus or minus 4.123. We can just go 1, 2, all over 2. So now we can do our split that we saw on the last page. We'll go this way. So if we have negative 5 minus 4.12 over 2, that gives us an answer of negative 4.56. Or we could take negative 5 plus. 4.92, 4.12. All over 2, this is going to be a smaller number. About negative 0.44. So you see that we still have two solutions, and we got them just by plugging things in. It didn't look super pretty when we had the square root of 17, but that doesn't matter. They're just numbers. So negative 4.56 is one solution, negative 4.44 is another solution. Let's look at this third example now. I'm going to give us a little bit more room. I'm going blue this time. Um, A is 3. B is negative 2. And C is negative 4. So our quadratic formula is, starts with negative b. So here we have negative, negative 2. Plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 2, minus 4 times 3 times negative 4. All of that is over 2 times 3. So now if we have negative negative 2, that's the opposite of negative 2. So that's a positive 2. Plus or minus. Here we have negative 2 squared. That's just going to be positive 4. Minus 4 times 3 times negative 4. So a negative and a negative. That'll be a positive. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. So 4 plus 48 all over 6, which is 2 times 3. Well, 4 plus 48 is just 52. So moving up here, x is equal to 2 plus or minus square root of 52, all over 6. Now, once again, we can get two decimal answers. So you can do the exact same split 
idea as we saw before. I'm just going to do this all together. If we add and then divide by divide by 6, we get 1.53. If we subtract, we get negative 0.86. So we still get two solutions, um, x is equal to 1.53 or x is equal to negative 0.86. So that's how you use the quadratic formula. It's just negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now all of these solutions that we got in these three examples all had two solutions. But if you remember from the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, if b squared minus 4ac is 0, you'll only get one solution. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, you'll have zero solutions. And I hope you see that now looking at the quadratic formula. If you have the square root of a negative number, you're going to get a non-real answer. That's why we'll have no solution. If you take the square root of b squared minus 4ac and b squared minus 4ac is zero, the square root of zero is just zero. So adding or subtracting zero does not do anything. But if you have b squared minus 4ac as positive, like here we had 52, here we had 17, we will always have two solutions. So the discriminant is just what's underneath your radical in your quadratic formula. But 10.6 gives us a foolproof method of solving for x, just the quadratic formula. It might feel tedious, might feel long, but it works every single time.